So what about the mutation of domitegravir? So by way of background, I think everyone knows that domitegravir has now been studied in three very large clinical trials. And what is absolutely startling in, in all of these trials, among thousands of people now who have been treated with domitegravir in first-line therapy, is that no one has ever developed resistance. Not to the dolutegravir, neither to any of the nucleosides that have been used together with the dolutegravir in first-line therapy. So you have to ask, what is this? Why? Is this a different drug? Is there something going on here that's, that's distinct from what we've seen before? And, and so we have done work in tissue culture through selection experiments, and we've identified a first mutation at position 263, and a second mutation at position 51, and we have shown that these two mutations together give rise to a level of resistance to dolutegravir that is really very modest. It's only about seven or eight fold. But very importantly, the two mutations together diminish viral fitness to a level of about 20% of wild type. So our hypothesis is very simple. The, re the viruses that might be capable of becoming resistant to dolutegravir in, in a person's body, in first-line therapy, are simply unable to grow out because they have become fixed in a non-mutable way that prevents their being able to escape from, from drug pressure. And, and that's our hypothesis, and um, we stand by it. I, I know there are many virologists and clinicians around the world who will tell you, oh, you know, Mark's a dreamer, it's going to take time for his ideas to be disproven, but believe me, he's going to be wrong. And I say, we're not going to be wrong because this drug is different. It, it, it works differently than the others in the sense that, that it is long acting. It has um, a fantastic ability to remain bound to the active site of the enzyme that far exceeds any other drug that we've ever had. And this is the drug that we should be using in first-line therapy around the world if we are really serious about wanting to control the HIV epidemic. As I said, so far there's no resistance. If you follow things logically, if there's no resistance to dolutegravir after thousands of people have taken it, that means you're never going to have a rebound in viral load. That means if people take dolutegravir in first-line therapy, they should never be able to transmit HIV to anyone else. So the consequences of having a, a, a drug for which escape from viral pressure may turn out to be almost impossible, may be profound in regard to public health and the ability of our society to control the HIV epidemic moving forward. That's the hope, that's the goal, and I think we're gonna be right. Okay, thank you very much.